Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bhartia, and welcome to a brand new episode of T3M or topic of this month. And the topic of this month is security and compliance. And today we have with us April Hickel, Vice President of Product Management at BMG Software. April, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, thank you for having me. When we talk about security, we can look at it from so many different lenses. Uh, if you look at traditional IT, the security was someone else's problem software used to be shipped and you know it was run by someone else but when we you know fast forward all to all the way cloud native containerized world security is moving in developers pipeline we talk about shift flat we talk about zero trust there are so many cultural technological changes are happening but i want to hear from your perspective from the perspective of kind of mainframe community as well is that how have you seen the evolution of security? Well, I think really just to start out, um, the mainframe has always had a reputation as being a very secure platform. And I think that over the years, one of the most interesting things that speaks directly to the importance of security is the mainframe survey that we do annually. It was about four years ago that security became the number one priority for our mainframe ecosystem. And that is in both our technical and our business respondents. And since those four years, as we watch it pass, it continues to pull away from priority two and priority three. So I think I would describe at Swapnil as the mainframe is a securable platform, with security as the number one priority. When we look at the modern world, we are living in a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud world. And when we are talking about multi-cloud, it involves mainframe, it involves public cloud, it involves a lot of on-prem as well, which also means we are mixing a lot of workload, mixing a lot of environments, mainframe, extremely secure uh, on-prem can also be secure but then we move to cloud so when your customers or users they do this multi-cloud have you seen where there are folks who are still trying to figure security out yes i would say everybody's still trying to figure out security just think about your own experience you know every time you log on to an application you're looking at oh, what password was that? And a new password and passwords are getting longer and more complicated. And that, you know, this, this affects all people, right? The end user of a mainframe is the same person who's using an iPhone. So they have to have user credentials. They are on LinkedIn. They are on other social media platforms. They're prone to the same level of security threats, phishing as everybody else. And I think that the mainframe security uh, posture has been, look, we have a very good security platform, we secure our users, but they're starting to realize that the same types of threats that are being seen everywhere are risks for the mainframe. So we see adoption of enterprise-wide strategy. So first versus trying to secure my data center assets one way and my cloud assets another way, we see customers saying, look, I need to apply the same principles and techniques, the same frameworks, whether it's the MITRE attack framework, whether it's zero trust, whether it's any of the other security approaches that you're looking at, and you're probably looking at all of them, across uniformly. So at BMC, one of the things that we've done to help clients is we've connected and brought the mainframe into that. So if you're thinking about how do I do secure certificate management in exactly the hybrid environment that you described, you can do that now in a single way using a single vendor across your entire set of infrastructure. If you're thinking about micro segmentation, this is to uh, uh, prevent lateral movement, right? So a bad guy gets in, you know, have them stay contained and not be able to laterally move across to your environment. You know, let's do that the same way on the mainframe as we do everywhere else. So we're very focused, I think, in security and building all of these partnerships so that the customer has an end-to-end -end solution, which can be managed a single way, which can function a single way, which is inclusive from the cloud all the way through 
their infrastructure as you've described it. And when I was listening to you, it's, it's uh, of course, technological solutions are there, but also needs a lot of cultural change within organizations. So from cultural perspective, uh, how different is the mainframe ecosystem from the, the cloud-centric, cloud-native containerized ecosystem? Because when we are talking about teams and we're asking them to embrace things like ShiftLab, we talk about Zero Trust, uh, we talk about uh, DevSecOps, we talk about, we are not like, I mean, the thing is there will always be people who are specialized in security, but we are expecting developers to do a lot of those things. So from cultural perspective, what you're seeing there? Security is a learning journey for everybody. So let's take a developer. You know, in years past, it was expected that developers use secure coding practices, perhaps, but they weren't being held accountable for also understanding how code scanning worked and understanding the details of SBOMs where you have a secure bill of materials that's being digitally signed so you know what's in your package. So I think that role all the way through to administrator on the mainframe, you used to be responsible for administering the security credentials of somebody. And now not only that, but you're looking for all privilege escalation, file, um, you know, file access, file integrity monitoring, all these different things. So everybody's security um, knowledge is being forced to elevate. It's like everybody has to know about security. Before, when you were a developer, you didn't have to know about some of the things you do now. And I think this forces a cultural change in that security is starting to come forward in everybody's position. You're no longer just an administrator of infrastructure you're the guardian of that infrastructure and you've got to think about security in your role and it's forcing a lot of collaboration it's not just the the security operations center sits you know as an overseer of security and it's their job that has really come down into being everybody's job and then even from administrators as you rightly pointed out it's shift left into development so i think Security awareness in culture is important. I think really an understanding of the implication of security tools and how they work is important. And it's important that administrators, developers, and the Security Operations Center have a holistic approach to how they're going to secure from delivery of the software all the way through implementation in their own systems. When we do look at organizations, what what, what are they doing realistically? Because security, you know, once again, uh, it, it should become part of their processes. That's, that's what we expect there. But uh, should there be specific teams uh, besides security who are responsible for uh, security, like DevSecOps we talk about? What I'm trying to understand is that in the traditional world, there used to be silos, right? Networking folks, storage folks, you know, security folks. But now those silos are breaking, but there are still folks who specialize in security and security is not. There are folks who just, you know, they love security. There are people who love networking. So what I'm trying to understand is that as much as we like to talk about it, what is happening in reality? So I would say that there's a security consolidator. So if you think about um, an organization, right? I, and I would argue that there are probably still network specialists, Linux specialists, CICS specialists, and mainframe. So you're always going to have people that specialize in a function. Today, in security in the mainframe, there are still people who specialize in the access control technology that all customers run, whether it's RACAF or ACF2 or Top Secret. Those people know how to administer those user profiles and those tools. However, there's a consolidator. So what you really need is you need a system to detect anomalies and threats into that. And you need to elevate the information about those anomalies and threats. And you probably need automation. And that's probably going to elevate to a centralized group. The Security Operations Center still has a key role in really consolidating all the threat vectors that are out there and then making sure they have an automated response or a runbook or playbook or however they call it to quickly respond. Now, I 
one of the, you know, the cautions I give customers is, especially as mainframe becomes more and more integrated into your standard enterprise approach to security, you also have to bring some of that specialty knowledge either directly or through some sort of tooling. Because, you know, if somebody copies your security database from the mainframe and you send notification to the security operations center and nobody in there knows what that 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 type of file or database is unique because it has all the user IDs and passwords in it, you know, that's different. So, you know, you have to blend it. But I would say our customers, the thing I hear from more and more customers is we want a, a single approach to doing something. Certificate management is a perfect example. And we want it connected to the expertise we have in the Security Operations Center where they're really good at handling incident response. Can you also talk about, you know, uh, about BMC Solutions, how you folks help customers, irrespective of whether they are pure mainframers or they also have a mix of you know other technologies so that they can improve their security? Two things that I think that we do really well to help customers. The first thing that we do is we've built a detection solution based on years and years of doing penetration testing in customers um, environments. So we've taken all of the knowledge from our penetration testing practices, from the individuals who hack into mainframe systems, and we've built that into threat intelligence, and we've embedded that in a system which allows us to quickly recognize if one of those um, security access points exists in your environment. And with that, we can provide notification to a security operations center with the enrichment about that so that they know what to do. We can also automate response. So if we see something as an example, like a user with a privilege doing something that they don't normally do, we can with draw those privileges from the user to prevent anything. So that's sort of one thing I would call it, detect, respond, and integrate with the SOC. Then the second thing we've done is we've built specific mainframe connectors for the mainstream enterprise products that the security operations teams are already familiar with. So if you're doing certificate management and you're securing your connections, it is likely that you're using Venify. And we have built a mainframe connector to Venify so you can use the same administrative team that you have, the same people that look after it, the same people that configure it, the same people that respond to it, and that now covers your mainframe. Similarly, we've built and delivered a connector for Illumio, who specializes in network segmentation. So I think, you know, along those two vectors, really understanding based on lots and lots of very specific and detailed mainframe knowledge, our, our protection intelligence, and then combining that with connections to these what I'll call mainstream specific security use cases, making sure they cover the mainframe. As you earlier also talked about, when it comes to mainframe, um, security is one of the strength. Uh, but as you know, the ecosystem is changing, folks are leveraging all these technologies. What can a distributed or cloud native world learn from mainframe security approach? Are you seeing that you know, they are moving in the right direction or you have some advice for them, hey, this is how they should approach security, whether it's come to solutions or it comes to uh, you know, uh, just like practices? My recommendation is that there's always been a great deal of discipline around the mainframe. And that has been really driven from the high standards of resilience, reliability, performance that have been expected. And so I would say, you know, the disciplined approach to understanding and configuring your security profiles is a discipline that's strong on the mainframe. However, I feel the mainframe has a lot to learn from the distributed side 
as the attack surfaces and sort of the experience in the public facing systems has really created a lot of lessons learned. So whether it be, you know, poor configurations in a cloud system, which allow a user to get in. So, you know, applying the discipline of the mainframe to the, um, really to the frameworks which have come out from incident management on the distributed side, you know, bringing those together would be my advice. Discipline, pick a framework, look at zero trust, look at the disastigs, look at the MITRE attack framework, and make sure you're taking that really intentional approach to your configuration, to your code testing, to your detection, notification, and response process. April, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, security, mainframe security, actually, in general, multi-cloud security. I really appreciate your insights, and I would love to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.